Hi folks. In this video we're going to have a look at uh, reloading some 303 British cartridges using the Lee Loader system. This is one of the older Lee Loader sets. comes in a cardboard two-piece box. These are still manufactured by Lee. They come uh, now in a red plastic box instead. Inside the box we've got our instructions. Those are important. You want to have a look at those before you use the set. You'll have a charge table. This is a, a real old set. You can see here, 1969, so a lot of these powders that are on here are uh, going to be hard to find nowadays. Nobel uh, rifle powders, for instance, pretty hard to come by. Um, some of these are still available, though. Some of these IMR series type powders. And inside the box, we've got the standard set of the tools. We've got uh, the decapping rod. We have the rod to drive the cartridge cases out of the die body. We have the, uh, the die body itself. We have the bullet seating portion of the die, the priming portion of the uh, system, and we've also got a powder dipper. Now the charges uh, on these low tables should match this dipper. Uh, it's 167. This is the old style series of dippers which were numbered. The newer style are in uh, CC's. So this one's a 167 and it matches the kit. Uh, these are considered to be a fairly slow way to reload rifle cartridges compared to a you know a bench mounted press or anything of that nature. But they do have some advantages especially when you're loading 303 British and uh, the primary advantage is case life. Now the big problem with 303 British chambers is that they are generally cut to an exceedingly large tolerance. Uh, most 303 British rifles will have uh, a very large chamber, especially you'll see it above the solid head of the case. There'll be uh, a pronounced expansion ring on most chambers and uh, that leads to short case life. Even if you attempt to partial neck size a 303 British cartridge in a full length die set, the die set will still reduce this portion of the case to the point where the case gets pushed in, it comes back out and firing, when you size it it gets pushed back in, and you basically end up with uh, metal fatigue in a ring right around the, the top of the solid case head, and eventually when you open the bolt up, you'll end up pulling the the case head right off the body of the case itself. And that's extreme enough in most 303 British rifles that you can only expect to reload uh, most brass probably three to five times if you're using a standard die set. Um, it's far better to use a system like this which only sizes the neck of the cartridge case. Uh, the Lee Collet dies are also a good solution. Um, Neck sizing dies, which are specific to just sizing the neck, which do not touch the body, are also a good way to load 303 British. But anyway, I'm getting a little sidetracked there. As I said, this is a, a good way to extend the case life with uh, 303 British, especially by using one of these Lee sets, because it only sizes the neck. Uh, for that reason, you should also check to make sure that uh, any brass that you have, which was not fired in your rifle, will actually fit in your rifle that you're loading for. Quite often you'll get lucky and you'll, you'll get some brass from a different rifle and it will actually chamber so I would recommend trying to chamber the brass first before you do anything with it otherwise you'd just be wasting your time. If it won't chamber there's no point in proceeding any further with uh, trying to load the cartridges using one of these, these systems. But if you have fired the ammunition originally in your rifle it will go back in and uh, it will be quite suitable. Anyway. We'll move on here to the uh, the first stage of this process, which is decapping, and I'm just going to uh, move some stuff around here. I'll get right back to you. Okay, the uh, first thing we're going to do is deprime all these cartridge cases, and you need this depriming base here. I didn't mention that in my quick uh, overview of the contents of the box, but this is basically a receptacle for the base of the brass, so the cartridge sits inside this like that. It's got a hollow section in the middle. That will allow primers which have been uh, fired to be poked out. And of course we use our decapping rod 
and it uh, fits inside the case neck like that. You're going to need yourself a uh, plastic faced hammer or a mallet, something like that. You don't want to use a steel hammer because you'll end up damaging the, uh, the tool set. So you just want to use something that's not marring and give the, uh, give the rod a few taps and that will have poked out the primer. You can see the primer there in the bottom and all the junk that fell out with the primer. And uh, so we can see we have a clear flash hole there and there's our uh, decapped case. It's an old timer this case, 1944. And uh, if you desire to clean the primer pocket, now is the time to do that as well. I'm not going to bother doing that in this video because uh, it's not an absolutely essential step. Although it is, it is a good idea, but it's not absolutely essential. Okay, we've got all our cartridge cases deprimed. Set those aside. Put the components back in the box for storage. And I'll just clean up these uh, spent primers and chuck them in the garbage. The next thing I like to do with the cartridge cases after I've got them deprimed is give them a quick cleaning. Now you don't need any specialized uh, cartridge case tumbler or any anything fancy to clean your cases off. You basically just want to remove any any dirt and soot from the outside of them. So basically all I do is I give them a wipe down with some paint thinner. And paint thinner on a piece of paper towel doesn't get much more low tech than that. Chances are you have some paint thinner summers if you got a shop. And uh, giving them a quick wipe down will remove any residue on the outside and prepare them for uh, All right, I've finished uh, wiping down all these cases. I just thought I'd show you how much dirt came off, even this uh, small number of cases. So always worth removing the dirt, keeping it out of your uh, your chamber and keeping it out of the, the tool set. Okay, here. the next thing we want to do is size our cartridge case necks. And to do that, we're going to take our die body out of the box. We're also going to need our plastic face mallet. And you'll notice that the die body has a collar on the top, a locking collar, and then the main die body is down below. I'm going to set the die body down so that the bottom part is facing up. We're going to take our cartridge case, drop it into the die, and then we're going to tap it into place using our plastic hammer. And you want to tap that in until it's flush with the bottom of the tool. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is next size the cartridge cases. And to do that, we're going to take our die body out of the box. You'll notice with the die body, there's a bottom portion here that's knurled. There's a top movable portion with a lock collar. We want to set the die body down so that the bottom is facing up. And with the die placed thusly, we're going to drop a cartridge case down into it like that. We're going to take our plastic face hammer and we're just going to tap it down. And we're going to tap that down until the case head is flush with the bottom of the die body. This is one of the downsides to using this tool. You have to do a bit of uh, thumping and banging, so you might not be welcome uh, to do this in some places. Next thing we want to do is reprime the case. So I'm going to go put my safety glasses on because priming cartridge cases with this tool set is probably uh, one of the more dangerous aspects uh, of using this tool. So just a moment, I'm going to go grab the primers and I'm going to get my safety glasses on. Okay, to prime the cartridge cases, we're going to need the priming chamber here. You can see there's a spring-loaded portion. We take our primer and set it inside this hole in the center. And we're going to take our die body with the cartridge case in it. We're going to set that over the top like that. It should be uh, locked in place like that. We'll take our knockout rod here. You can see it's knurled on one end and it's flat on the other. Put the flat end into the die body. Take our plastic mallet. And give it a few gentle taps to seat the primer. And if you've done that correctly, you should be able to run your finger over the primer and the case head and they should be level. You don't want the primer to be standing proud. And you can see that's also tapped the uh, case free of the die body. We have a close look at the, the case neck here. You can see that there are some marks on there which indicates that it's been sized. 
we compare that to an unsized case, you can see the difference there. Okay, we'll move on to the next step. And that is, in fact, adding the powder. And we're going to need our decapping chamber again for that. So we'll set the decapping chamber there. We'll actually put the cartridge case loosely back in the die body. It's not going to be driven in this time, it's going to be sitting in there loose. You can see how it sticks out proud. And we'll just set that all on top of the, the die body like that. And then we're going to go get our powder. I'm actually going to use a load right off this chart. You can see here that we have uh, data for DuPont, DuPont IMR 3031 using either 150 to 180 grain bullets. And I've got a can of IMR 3031 here. And I'm going to use my favorite uh, 303 bullets, my favorite jacket of 303 bullets that is. And these are 174 grain Hornady round nose. These generally prove to be quite an accurate bullet in uh, most 303 rifles. Now to use the powder dipper, I got my old uh, yogurt container here which I use for a powder receptacle. I just pour a bunch of powder in. And then we'll take our powder dipper and uh, immerse the dipper down into the powder like that. Pick it straight up, give it a sideways shake to level it off. And in my experience, that will give you a charge which is quite close to the one rated for the dipper. If you've got a scale, it doesn't hurt to double check this, but in my experience the lead dippers will not throw charges that are greater than what the tables indicate. So we've already placed our primed and uh, sized cartridge case into the die body. So now all we have to do is add the powder to it. So you can just pour it down through the top and give it a few shakes to get it in there. After we've done that, we'll seat the bullet. A couple of important things to mention about bullet seating with this uh, setup. As I mentioned earlier in the video, there's an adjustable collar here on the top of the die body and a lock nut below it. And basically, screwing that in and out will adjust the amount of uh, bullet seating depth that you have. And that's, uh, that's fairly important. You want to adjust that to give you an optimal bullet seating depth. And that's going to be a matter of some trial and error. You can look uh, into a reloading manual. It will usually give you um, a suggested overall length for different cartridges with different bullets. I'm using these uh, round nose bullets with a can lower and these are specifically designed for the 303 British so I'm going to be seating these in until the cantaloupe is lined up with the top of the case mouth. That will be a, a good seating depth to start with. Now if you haven't previously adjusted the die to get the, the seating depth that you require I would suggest that you screw this collar out fairly far, seat a bullet, and, uh, and then incrementally screw the die down until you achieve the correct depth because obviously if you seat the bullet too deeply the first time around uh, you're going to be uh, sort of stuck, you're going to have to go get a bullet puller or just you know settle for a, a less than optimal length cartridge. So anyway, I'm going to drop our bullet into the top of the die body here and then we'll set our seating stem here, you can see how it's all hollow at the end. Set that on top We'll get our hammer once again, and we're going to tap the bullet down into the cartridge case. And when the top of the uh, when the top of the decapping chamber there comes to rest against the stop collar, we're going to be as deep as we can go unless we adjust the collar down a little further. So that is bottomed out, so we'll take the whole thing off the cartridge, and there we go, we have a loaded cartridge, and that's seated to just where I wanted it. You can see that the, uh, the cantaloupe is lined up with the end of the cartridge case. Now, should you desire a crimp on your 
finished cartridge. That can be done with the tool as well. Uh, I don't recommend it in the case of the 303 British. It's probably not going to be necessary because if you have enough, enough case neck tension here, um, a crimp is really not going to do anything terribly beneficial for you. Um, it's handy though for uh, you know lever action guns and so forth, but um, pretty much not really a, a terribly useful thing for the 303 British, but we'll show you how it works anyway. To apply a crimp, you take your die body once again, you want to place it with the, the bottom part down and the stop collar up. You want to set the cartridge upside down in the stop collar. You want to take your, your decapping base here and put it over the top of the cartridge case. And then we will drive, we'll tap down on that and drive the, drive the, uh, the cartridge case down into the tool and that will apply a moderate amount of crimp. You can see the crimp is formed there. Obviously you don't want to just tap the loaded cartridge without any protection on it because you'd be hitting right in a primer. So using the, the decapping base, because it's got a hole where the primer would be, it does not put any force on the primer. I'll we'll just compare a, a crimped round and an uncrimped round so you can see the difference in them. Here you can see a round which has been loaded. It has no crimp applied versus one which has been crimped using the tool set. You can see there's a bit of a bevel right there. You don't want to overdo that just enough to uh, to get a good purchase. But like I said, I don't think it's really necessary on the 303 British. Anyway, that's pretty much it. The uh, Like I said, the major advantage of using the Lee loader for the 303 British is case life. There are other ways which will uh, ensure good case life other than using one of these neck sizing dies or the Lee Collet die set which is uh, a great thing um, much faster than one of these Lee loaders but once again these are compact um, you can put them pretty well anywhere if you don't have a place to load you can you know still load cartridges if you have one of these sets some powder some primers and some bullets it'll keep your rifle running and uh, save yourself quite a bit of money compared to buying factory cartridges. Anyway, hopefully uh, you enjoyed that, and we'll talk to you next time.